and welcome to the Serpentine Sackler Gallery. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all here for the eighth edition of the Serpentine's Marathon Series. My name is Julia Payton Jones, and I'm director of the Serpentine Galleries. Now, I see in the audience a number of faces who weren't here yesterday evening when the 89 plus began. So I am going to give you a overview about an institutional overview, not only about 89 plus, but also about where the institution is at the moment. What I'm also going to do is leave out the extensive list of thank yous, which are going to be at the end of the day, and I hope you'll all be here to hear them, because of course, the people who made 89 plus possible in a wide variety of different ways are absolutely central to the whole endeavor. The Marathon series was conceived by Serpentine Gallery co-director Hans Ulrich Obrist in 2006 and is integral to the programming of the Serpentine Gallery Pavilion, now in its 13th year designed by Su Fujimoto. The Serpentine Gallery's Marathon series brings together remarkable people from diverse fields and disciplines, from the visual arts, architecture, music, science, technology, literature, theory, politics, and beyond. It is an opportunity for distinct voices from many perspectives to come together to share ideas about subjects they believe are significant for the world today. The marathon concept is intended to capture a sense of the speed, vitality, and urgency of these ideas, to engage with them and see where they might take us. We are particularly pleased that this year's marathon can take place in the new Serpentine Sackler Gallery, designed by Pritzker Architecture Prize Laureate Zaha Hadid and her associates. We are delighted that Zaha will be able to join us during the course of today and to participate in the marathon program. The Serpentine Ga Sackler Gallery, which was made possible with generous support from Dr. Mortimer and Teresa Sackler Foundation, along with founding patrons and benefactors, has been developed with a multidisciplinary program in mind, intended to make connections between contemporary art and the wider critical culture in which it operates. To borrow Marcus de Sorto's words from his letter to a young mathematician in the 89 plus marathon booklet, the exciting breakthroughs are done by those who cross these artificial boundaries between disciplines. With its dis multidisciplinary agenda, it is perhaps fitting, therefore, that the Serpentine Sackler Gallery is a venue for this year's edition of the marathon. It is equally fitting that we've been able to launch the inaugural Ray Reverdengo Serpentine Grant, an annual open competition for emerging talent in the fields of art, architecture, film, music, science, theory, and writing. Each winner receives a grant of 15,000 euros to produce a new project and to present it at the Fondazione Sandretto Ray Reverdengo in Turin. This year's winners Nico Caramayan, Tierney Finster, and Ricardo Paratore were selected by a combination of public vote and a panel of guests, announced here in the Serpentine Gallery earlier this week. And we're very delighted that Patrizia Sandretto Rey Rebedengo, our friend and dear colleague, is here as chairman of the jury to announce the, uh, the winners uh, later on today. Each edition of the Serpentine Gallery's marathon has a theme. The first edition, the Interview Marathon, which Hans Ulrich co-curated with Rem Koolhaas, sparked such huge interest that it was developed into an ongoing program. Subsequent iterations have been dedicated to the theme of experiments, poetry, and, marathon, and memory, amongst others. This year's edition is devoted to people born in or after 1989, bringing leading lights from this generation together with influential thinkers from other generations. The 89 Plus Marathon forms part of the 89 Plus Project, an ongoing international multi-platform research project co-founded by Simon Castets and Hans Ulrich. In 1989, against a backdrop of the end of the Cold War period, marked by the fall of the Berlin Wall, Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. This invention has transformed our world in the space of one generation the 89 plus generation. Grasping the significance of this transformation is one of our greatest challenges today. It has been world changing on a par with other seismic shifts in the history of civilization. 
In his engaging text for the 89 plus marathon booklet, the French philosopher and writer Michel Serres says in an interview with Hans Ulrich, the first, in parentheses, revolution, was in the first millennium BC, when writing emerged in an oral world. The second was printing in the 15th century, with the advent of Guten Gutenberg and the book. It seems to me that our revolution, the digital one, is the third. This makes me think of the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus. Having struggled to gain backing from several of Europe's monarchs for his ambitious plans to search for new lands, he eventually received the support of Queen Isabella I of Castile. While Isabella's coffers were greatly depleted following her recent military campaign in Granada, she made arrangements to help finance Columbus's trip, which some accounts say included giving him some of her jewelry to sell. Columbus's venture was an incredibly risky one. However, his belief in the new lands to the west of Africa was so strong that he staked everything on the voyage he was prepared to take, and many did not expect him to return. How does one convince the status quo of paradigm-shifting new ideas? How can you deeply change entrenched beliefs? How do you bring people round to your way of thinking? In Marcus de Soto's words, an idea only begins to have life once it is brought alive in the mind of someone else. Columbus's voyages are often said to have put an end to the idea that the world was flat, while many informed people of the time were of the opinion that the world was round. And I try to imagine the seismic shift brought on by this understanding, a revolution in terms of perception that fundamentally altered our view of the world. This leap of faith the capacity of the human mind to stretch itself in ways that could be unimaginable is expressed in Mary Midgley's letter to a young philosopher, also in the marathon booklet. Options that couldn't be taken up when they were first expressed may sometimes be just what we need today. Isabella's own leap of faith and her commitment to Columbus's risky venture, her openness to the possibility of what must have seemed almost inconceivable, resulted in the mapping of the modern world. And if there is a truth to the legend about her jewelry, it is also a curious model of patronage that predates the idea of sponsorship, which is so necessary to the functioning of public arts institutions, such as the Serpentine Galleries. The seismic shift of Sir Tim Berners-Lee's life-changing invention changed the world beyond anything that could have been imaginable at the time. Barely a day, decade later, the impact it would have on everything from banking to our social lives, from the media to shopping, from culture to activism, is so fundamental that it is nothing short of miraculous. It is the window through which we now see, understand, and interact with the world. The internet, is heralded, the internet heralded the arrival in earnest of the digital age. As with Columbus, this discovery has opened up a new world, new spaces to people, a world of invigorating ideas, experiences, sights, and sounds. It is probably just as difficult for the 89 plus generation to imagine a world without digital technology as it is for many people from the pre-89 generations to keep up with all the developments and applications of this technology. However did we arrange meetings, or in fact ever manage to meet up with anybody at all before our mobile telephones. It's almost impossible to drop out of contact with old friends today, and it is now possible to produce a polished album in one's bedroom, write a best-selling book in a cafe, or make a film that is watched by millions all on no budget at all. The creative possibilities that have opened up seem limitless. As someone who is more at home with a pencil than a mouse, I'm fascinated by the digital revolution that has been taking place over the past three decades. I'm intrigued by this new landscape we find ourselves in, curious to understand it better, to know who the people are who are driving it forward, what makes them tick. Likewise, who are the people who inhabit this world? How do they think, feel, and act? For me, this is one of the most exciting things about the Serpentine's Marathon program. By inviting a spectrum of speakers from such a breadth of disciplines, over a short period, and it's an extraordinary opportunity to hear an illuminating cross-section of ideas by specialists in their fields, 
that makes it compelling to both specialists and non-specialists alike. There is a certain element of the excitement in the unknown, like venturing out to sea in search of new lands. But the digital landscape we find is not so stable as those found by Columbus. Instead, it is a landscape that is constantly changing, and the speed of this transformation has been phenomenal, both in terms of its growth and innovation. And as Douglas Gordon says, it's only just begun. To borrow words from et al. Adnan's letter to a young poet, so there is no advice to a young poet. It is his or her love for it, need for it, the resolution to try it, to do it, that will open the way. Now today we have, of course, uh, the 89 plus marathon in this uh, wonderful space designed by Zaha. But we also have exhibitions across two sites. Here at the Serpentine Sackler Gallery, we have Adrian Villarojas. Today we reboot, reboot the planet, a site-specific installation by the visionary young sculptor and the youngest artist to have represented a country in the history of the Venice Biennale. At the Serpentine Gallery, the sixth most visited museum or gallery in London and the 60th worldwide, attracting up to 1.2 million visitors in any one year, we are pleased to present the first solo exhibition in a UK public institution of the work of the pioneering Arti Povera art artist, Marisa Mertz, which includes a selection of paint sculptures, painting and installation from across her remarkable career, spanning over half a century. Every year, the Serpentine builds a new wing with our temporary pavilion, now in its 13th year, and a unique scheme worldwide in its international scope and level of ambition. Su Fujimoto, the designer of this year's pavilion, as I've said before, follows in the footstep of Herzog de Murren and Ai Weiwei last year, Rem Koolhaas and Cecil Balmond, Frank Geary and Oscar Niemeyer, with Su's ethereal pavilion, which stands on the serpentine lawn in front of the gallery. Situated nearby the entrance of the building and oscillating precariously between stability and stability lies a major outdoor commission by Peter Fishley and David Weiss, rock on top of another rock, the first public sculpture by the artist to be commissioned in the UK. It is a short seven-minute walk between the Serpentine Sackler Gallery and the Serpentine Gallery, and the cord that links them is the Bridge Commission, a commission of international artists and writers who, who have written short stories that last for the duration of the walk. Michael Craig Martin has designed an artwork, which is a map that takes visitors between two, the, the two sites, and I hope that you will pick one up. This weekend, of course, is the marathon. However, further afield, our seven-year research project into the different forms of the art of the Middle East, called the Edgware Road Project, continues with a month-long residency from artist Malak Helami, entitled From Neighborhood to Neighborhoods, as part of an artist residency exchange with QMA's Mataf, Museum of Modern Arab Art. So now back to 89 plus, and to all of you, thank you very much indeed for coming. It is my great pleasure to hand, hand over to Hans-Ulrich Oberist, who will take the proceedings on from here. Thank you.